Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, a few weeks ago, I took a look at how the Radeon RX 588GB was performing in today's games at 1080p and 1440p using a range of visual quality settings. And it was great to see that this old mid-range GPU was hanging in there surprisingly well, as it didn't really take much to achieve highly playable performance. The only issue, of course, is the price. A few months ago when I started recommending the RX 580 as an alternative to spending well over $1,000 US on a brand new, heavily sculpted Ampere RDNA 2 product, the RX 580 could typically be had for around $300 US on eBay, sometimes a little less, and although that is roughly twice what you might have paid for a brand new one just a year or so ago, we are of course living in very different times. Sadly though, an RX 580 8GB at $300 is now a pipe dream. As crazy as that sounds, most of them are selling between four to $500 US. And as an alternative to the Sculpt Ampere and RDNA 2 GPUs, let's say a $1,300 RTX 3070, I think that makes an RX 580 still less attractive. As crazy as that sounds. Of course, if you don't have $1,300 or $1,000 plus to spend on a brand new GPU, then maybe an RX 580 is all you have. And if that is the case, perhaps an alternative would be the four gigabyte version because that can be had for around the $300 US mark. And if you dial down some quality settings, you can still achieve a similar level of performance. So as long as you're not exceeding that VRAM capacity, uh, your performance should be the same as what I showed in the previous video. And of course you can always tune the quality settings, turn them down and get into that four gigabyte VRAM buffer. Another alternative for similar money is the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB. This model is currently selling on the secondhand market for around $300 US. You get a little bit more VRAM than the 4GB RX 580 and performance should be very similar. So that being the case, I thought it might make sense to revisit the GTX 1060 6GB with a similar style content piece. So here we are. I'm going to assume at this point that you know what the deal is with the GTX 1060, so I'm not going to go over the specs or bang on about the history of the product. We're just looking at it from a make-do type situation. Can it get you by in 2021 while we wait for current generation mid-range GPUs to come down from their ridiculous margins over MSRP? That being the situation, as was the case with the RX 580 version, this isn't so much a head-to-head -head benchmark comparison as it is just seeing how the GTX 1060 6GB handles a range of new or popular games using low, medium, and high quality settings. So I've tested 17 games at 1080p and 1440p using three different quality presets. Testing has been conducted on our Ryzen 9 5950X test system using 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. So the results are going to be entirely GPU limited. Okay. Let's get into it. We'll start off by looking at performance in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This AMD sponsored title does work much better with Radeon GPUs, though having said that the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB still does very well and can deliver a decent gaming experience using the medium quality settings at 1080p with 59 FPS on average. If that's not enough though, the lowest preset will allow for 70 FPS and that's not much slower than the 75 FPS the Radeon RX 580 produced. For 1440p gaming, you'll probably want to go with the lowest quality preset, and even then you won't be treated to a 60fps experience. Still, I think given this GPU's age, the performance we're seeing here is quite good. Older GPUs like the GTX 1060 are still very usable for most esports type games, so competitive titles like Rainbow Six Siege. Although the GTX 1060 is quite a lot slower than the RX 580 here, you can still enjoy a high refresh rate experience at 1080p using the high quality preset. And even at 1440p, you're still looking at over 60 FPS at all times, and it is possible to push over 100 FPS using the lowest quality preset. So for these games, a secondhand GTX 1060 does offer a lot of value. Biomutant is a brand new game that is very visually impressive, even using the lower quality settings. Performance of the GTX 1060 6GB was excellent, either matching or exceeding the RX 580. And even with the high quality preset, you'll be able to achieve 60fps at 1080p, and then push well beyond that with the medium and low quality presets. Surprisingly, even at 1440p, you're still in for a 60fps-like experience using the low quality preset, so that's a great result given how good the game looks even using these low quality settings. 
Outriders is another brand new game that I've tested, and again, the GTX 1060 is very similar to the RX 580. Even with the medium quality settings, the game looks great, and at 1080p, you'll be looking at just over 60 FPS or over 40 FPS at 1440p. The game was silky smooth using the low quality preset and still managed to look surprisingly good. So overall, playing Outriders on a GTX 1060 6GB was an enjoyable experience. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, and again, we're looking at very similar performance between the GTX 1060 and RX 580. This meant that the 1060 was able to deliver highly playable performance at 1080p using the second highest quality preset, labelled as Favor Quality. But this is another example of a game that looks great even when dialed down a bit, and I've found the visuals are still excellent with the original quality preset, and this allowed for 71 FPS at 1080p and 49 FPS at 1440p. The GTX 1060 isn't quite as punchy as the RX 580 in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, though they are comparable with the medium quality preset. We see that the 1060 does drop off a little when using the low and lower settings, but even so we're talking about 75 FPS on average at 1080p using low, and 88 FPS using the lower setting, so a good experience overall. As I mentioned in the RX 580 revisit, Doom Eternal is an exceptionally well optimized game, and as a result these old mid-range GPUs work a treat. And although the GTX 1060 was quite a bit slower than the RX 580, it still managed over 100 FPS at 1080p using the Nightmare settings. Then at 1440p we see that it averaged 88 FPS using the low preset and 77 FPS with high, but was unable to use the Nightmare settings without tweaking the texture quality due to the more limited 6GB VRAM buffer. The RX 580 and GTX 1060 did deliver comparable performance in Death Stranding. The 1060 was slightly slower in some instances, but overall performance was excellent. We're talking about well over 60fps at 1080p using the default quality preset, which can be thought of as a high quality setting. And even at 1440p, performance was impressive and certainly very playable, even with the default quality preset. The Dirt 5 results are very strange and rather unexpected I have to say, and that's because this is an AMD sponsored title so you'd expect the RX 580 to run away with it, like what we saw earlier when testing Assassin's Creed Valhalla for example. But here the opposite's true, under all test conditions the GTX 1060 was faster and sometimes much faster as seen when testing with the ultra low and low presets particularly at 1080p. So as it turns out, Dirt 5 is an excellent title for the GTX 1060, even with the medium quality preset, which looks excellent by the way, the GTX 1060 6GB spat out 65 FPS on average. But as I mentioned, the low and ultra low results at 1080p are particularly surprising, and I did go back and test both models to verify this data. It seems there is some kind of bug on AMD's side that's heavily limiting the performance of the RX 580 under these test conditions and as a result the GTX 1060 was up to 42% faster. The Fortnite data is rather boring, but I suppose in a good way, if that's a thing, basically the RX 580 and GTX 1060 are tightly matched here, but that's a good thing as performance was excellent. Using the medium quality settings, which is what most Fortnite players use for that competitive advantage, the 1060 was good for 158 FPS on average at 1080p, and then 101 FPS at 1440p, so both are highly playable and enable a very enjoyable gaming experience. Watch Dogs Legion is an Nvidia sponsored title, so you might expect the GTX 1060 to have the edge here, but no, that wasn't the case. It seems as though old Nvidia GPUs work best in AMD sponsored titles, while AMD GPUs work best in Nvidia sponsored titles. Who knew? The GTX 1060 was still able to average 64 FPS at 1080p using the medium quality preset, so it's certainly still good enough to enjoy the game, and even with the higher settings you're still looking at 55 FPS on average. All that said, 1440p is a bit of a stretch with just 47 FPS on average using the lowest quality preset. Resident Evil Village is yet another brand new game that I've included and this one played significantly better with the Radeon GPU. The GTX 1060 was still able to deliver highly playable performance at 1080p using the maximum quality preset. It was just 15% slower than the RX 580 and 20% slower using the balanced preset. About the only game you probably can't really enjoy that well with the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB is Cyberpunk 2077. Here we're looking at just 46 FPS on average at 1080p using the lowest possible quality settings. Of course Cyberpunk 2077 isn't the most well optimized title, so the results are hardly surprising. 
And we saw previously that the RX 580 also struggled, though it was 20% faster and that difference was very noticeable. Forza Horizon 4 is a good example of a well-optimized game. The visuals are just breathtaking in this one, and while it certainly can't be compared to something like Cyberpunk 2077 as they're entirely different games with very different hardware requirements, Forza still looks very great and is a lot of fun. The GTX 1060 spat out an insane 167 FPS at 1080p using the lowest quality preset, then 115 FPS with medium, and quite impressively 84 FPS using Ultra. In fact, even at 1440p, the Ultra preset still allowed for 66 FPS on average. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order does play better with the GTX 1060, and as a result, we're almost getting 60 FPS at 1440p using the medium quality preset. Dropping down to 1080p allows for a 60 FPS experience using the maximum in-game quality preset, while high allows for over 70 FPS. So the GTX 1060 is more than capable of delivering highly playable performance in this title using a respectable level of visual settings. The second last game tested is F1 2020, and here the GTX 1060 is slightly slower than the RX 580, though that's not too much of an issue as we're pushing over 60 FPS in almost all test conditions. For example, at 1080p we're looking at 75 FPS on average using the maximum quality preset, which is ultra high, then 132 FPS with medium, and 160 FPS with low. Then at 1440p it is still possible to render 105 FPS on average using the ultra low preset, 89 FPS with medium, and then 55 FPS with ultra high, so another solid gaming experience here. Last up we have Apex Legends, and I was very surprised by these results, because last time I tested Apex with these GPUs, which would have been about a year ago now, the GTX 1060 was slightly faster than the RX 580. But using the latest version of the game with an entirely new map and of course much newer display drivers, the RX 580 came out on top, and by around a 14-17% to margin. Although the Radeon GPU was quite a bit faster, the GTX 1060 was still able to deliver very playable performance under most of the test conditions with 69 FPS at 1080p using the high quality settings, 88 FPS using medium, and then 106 FPS when running with the low quality settings. As expected, 1440p was a bit more challenging, but even so it was possible to receive around 70 FPS on average using the low quality settings. And just lastly, here's a quick look at the 17 game average, because although this isn't really meant to be a head-to-head -head comparison, I know many of you will want to see this graph. At 1080p, we see that the RX 580 is still 4-5% to faster, and that's about what I found a year ago when comparing the two in over 30 games. The margin does widen at 1440p, using the low and medium settings, the RX 580 was on average 7% faster, and then 11% faster using high. And the difference in VRAM capacity is no doubt having an effect on those results. So there you have it, the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB. It's still surprisingly punchy in 2021, and although it hasn't aged quite as well as the RX 580, I think it's fair to say that overall performance is still very good, providing you're willing to dial those quality settings down a little bit, of course. Uh, for roughly $300 US on the second-hand market, that's about $50 more than what it actually sold for brand new back in mid-2016, so in that respect, it's obviously a terrible deal today. But if you're desperate for a graphics card to enjoy some games, this is a fairly cheap option, again, by today's standards. And just to be clear, I'm not recommending anyone race out and drop $300 on an old GeForce GTX 1060 6GB graphics card. The truth is, I don't have a good option for you. Nobody does. But if spending well over $1,000 on an RTX 3070 or $800 to $900 on an RTX 3060 is out of the question, and frankly it is in my opinion, uh, then a make-do option like a second-hand GTX 1060 6GB is a reasonable alternative, and it's one that'll see you lose less money in the long run. By the way, if you don't care about texture quality because you play games like Rainbow Six Siege or Fortnite, for example, then the 3GB GTX 1060 might be a better option as those often sell for around $100 less, and will deliver a similar level of performance, assuming of course that you keep game assets under 3 gigabytes. On a final note, a few people were upset about our use of the Ryzen 9 5950X test system for the RX 580 benchmarks, claiming it was inflating GPU performance and giving unrealistic expectations. I'd just like to point out that this really isn't the case. Even with a much lower end CPU, such as the Ryzen 5 2600, for example, in almost all of these tests, you'll be heavily GPU limited because the RX 580 and GTX 1060 aren't very powerful. 
That said, if you happen not to be limited by these five-year-old mid-range GPUs, well, I've got good news for you. Don't stress about a GPU upgrade as you're in desperate need of a CPU upgrade, and right now they're much cheaper and easier to buy. Obviously, we always test GPU performance without a CPU bottleneck because CPU limited data for a graphics card evaluation becomes rather pointless very quickly. Having said all of that, there is the matter of the NVIDIA driver overhead issue, and it's true that the GTX 1060 will require more CPU power for DirectX 12 titles. May not necessarily be the case for DirectX 11, it really depends on the game, but certainly for DirectX 12, the GTX 1060 will use up more of your CPU than something like an RX 580. And that is just due to the architectural differences that we've explored in other videos. So if you want to learn about them, search for driver overhead stuff and you will find that. But yeah, that testing is for a completely different content piece. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you liked the video, give it a like. Uh, I think it might be interesting to revisit the GTX 1063 gigabyte. That could be yeah, quite interesting. Also the GTX 1070, that looks like being a reasonably uh, decent buy as well again, by today's standards on the secondhand market. So maybe a GTX 1070 revisit uh, might be in order. Perhaps I could compare that with the uh, GTX 1060 60 gigabyte results that we see in this video or the RX 580, whichever one you'd prefer the GTX 1070 to be compared to. Don't think it would make sense to cram both of them with the 1070 into the graphs. That'd be, the bars would be very small. It'd be very difficult to follow what's going on. Anyway, Enough waffling. If you like the video, I think I've said like, subscribe for more content. As I said, there's more of this sort of stuff coming up on the channel along with some other really cool content. Uh, if you want to support the channel directly on Floatplan or Patreon, you can do so. You get some really cool perks in return. We have an awesome Discord server, great community there that loves talking about tech. Q&A, behind the scenes content, uh, live stream with two and myself. We do that every month. That comes up towards the end of the month and that's a lot of fun. We just talk with you guys live, answer your questions and yeah, nothing's off limits on that one. But anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.